This better not be about that Toy Story game again. Trust me, it's good this time. Wait, we're not playing on the Wii version? No, trust me, this is way faster, come on. <sighs> All right, let's do this. You're not funny. Toy Story 3 the video game is quite the underrated piece of art. While its levels are all over the place, each one is unique in their own way. Although to truly appreciate Toy Story 3's design, you need to become aware of how broken the game is first. For almost a decade, speedrunners have been working together to push the time lower and lower. Along their journey, they have been tasked to break as many levels as possible. However, one level in particular has stuck out more than the rest. One level has been tested more than any other level in the game. One level that just wouldn't give in. This is the story of how speedrunners spend months at a time trying to break this level. This is the story of how they used new methods to discover the hidden potential this game possessed. This was our quest to go infinity and beyond. Since 2012, runners have set their sights on speedrunning the game to show its full potential. Before we break each one of the levels down first, let's review the relevance each level has in the game. The train rescue level follows closely with the original Toy Story 3 movie where the objective is to save the orphans trapped inside of the train. The level begins with Woody riding Bullseye until they arrive at the train. Once Woody hops onto the train, he traverses through obstacles that stand in his path. Once Woody reaches the end of the train, he must hit Porkchop's flying saucer to end the level. Andy's house is the next level. The toys are desperate to be played with, so similar to the movie, they try to grab the phone to grab Andy's attention. To complete their mission, they must sneak into the basement and grab the second phone with the help of the paratroopers. Sunnyside Daycare is a level that shows the toys being introduced to Lotso inside of the daycare. The level is centered around three different minigames. After you complete all three minigames, you have essentially completed the level. Bonnie's House The entire level showcases Bonnie's imagination with all of the toys. In her imagination, Woody must fend for himself against the witch that is trying to attack him. After he escapes drowning, he must fix a rocket ship before finally escaping the evil witch. Prison Break is the shortest level in the game. The toys return to Sunnyside to save their friends. There are police cars guarding the entire room, so they need to be careful every step of the way until they rescue everybody. Junkyard throws our heroes in the depths of the incinerator. After Buzz rescues the aliens, the trio must save their friends yet again. You know, the ones they literally just saved. The level makes for good co-op play, and everybody makes it out safely. The final level of the game is named Haunted Bakery. This is the final boss battle of the game where Buzz is tasked to use a multitude of weapons to defeat the evil muffins and the evil witch. Once the witch has been defeated 5 phases in a row, the level is completed. All of these levels are unique in some way, whether it be by how you use the characters or by how the level is designed. Now most of these levels have either been broken or optimized. Let's break each one down. Train Rescue is the most linear level in the game. The only optimizations have been tighter dashes and a couple of short skips here and there. Although, there is one theoretical time save at the beginning of the level that has rarely ever been used. At the beginning of the train portion, the second car gets blown up which sends Woody to the ground. Woody's getup animation takes about 2 seconds plus the amount of time that he's in the air. This will occur every time at the beginning of the level. But there is a way around this unfortunate occurrence. If you dash on the same frame the UFO collides with the car, the explosion has no effect on Woody, thus saving roughly 2-3 to three seconds within the first 2 minutes of the run. This has yet to be used in a completed run of the game, but time will tell when this strategy will be successfully executed in a full game run. In Andy's house, runners figured out how to skip the entire puzzle in Andy's room. 
Upon gaining control of the characters, speedrunners can reach the phone in less than 10 seconds. The basement has also been optimized in the past year by implementing more infinite wall jumps and risky leaps of faith. Sunnyside has not been flourishing with any game-breaking strategies. There have however been multiple routes discussed for the Bullseye and Toy Car minigames that could potentially be faster. Normally, players would switch the game language to French because you could immediately skip all the toys' dialogue. This was because there was no dialogue recorded in French. Wait a second, you're not playing in French? However, there was an update for Toy Story 3 that caught runners' attention. Yes, a Toy Story game that came out 12 years ago is still getting updates. The developers added dialogue for all languages. There was now no way to skip the dialogue. Muchas gracias. To counter this unfortunate update, the speedrun moderators have allowed runners to delete the dialogue file from the game. This may seem sketchy, but once the dialogue folder is deleted, the dialogue functions virtually the same as it did before the update. In terms of gameplay, Sunnyside is not a broken level. Bonnie's house is a totally different story. Out of all the levels, this is one of the most broken of them all. The first portion of the level normally requires Woody to climb up bookshelf by bookshelf to avoid the hazardous coffee. Now this would normally take around 8 to 10 minutes to complete, so how did this become one of the shortest splits in the entire run? It's all thanks to infinite wall jumps. Infinite wall jumping up using this route alone saves nearly 6 minutes over the course of this section. The next portion of the level transitions smoothly to the rocket ship. Woody is normally meant to claim the three batteries at the top by riding across the rails. Instead, we abuse a cutscene and fall through the entire ship. I found that, by the way. Then all you have to do is put the last battery in its capsule. This alone skips roughly 15 minutes of gameplay, and in runs, this level is only 3.5 minutes long. Now, Prison Break is the actual shortest level in the game made even shorter by not using Jesse. Instead, by using invisible walls and invisible floors, we can free all of our friends in just a minute and a half. Junkyard can be argued to be the most broken level in the game. It starts slow, but runners have found ways to completely break the very nature of the level. By abusing checkpoints and not using buzz at all until the very end of the level, Junkyard can be completed in less than 5 minutes on average. Lastly, Haunted Bakery. Other than aiming your shots perfectly, the optimization that has broken the level is obtaining max ammo as quickly as possible after each phase. This forces the next phase of the fight to start sooner than normal. As of right now, this is the level of optimization that these levels are at right now. There are a couple of linear levels, but overall the game has undergone a revolution, and who knows just how much more there is yet to discover. What more surprises will this game continue to throw at us? Well, there is one surprise, but it's probably not what you were thinking. Because throughout this entire video so far, I have been avoiding the most important topic. If you're familiar with Toy Story 3 the video game, you probably know what I have been missing. There is one more level that I have avoided talking about until this very moment. One level that has stuck out more than the rest. One level that has been tested more than any other level in the game. One level that just wouldn't give in. Everybody, I welcome you to Buzz's video game. The opening cinematic displays a planet in the distance. As the camera pans down, Buzz is careening toward the ground below him. After the cinematic, the level begins. The first two and a half minutes consist of what is essentially a flying auto-scroller. 
hitting any asteroids or walls will slow Buzz down for only a second. After Buzz lands on the ground, he must avoid the falling meteors destroying the planet. But just as Buzz thinks that he is safe, a huge meteor collides with the planet. Miraculously, Buzz survives. He has no choice but to hop across the few platforms that survived the collision. Buzz's laser is needed to destroy crystals that appear in the distance. Keeping the laser on a crystal for 4 seconds makes it glow bright red and explode, in some cases revealing the path further throughout the level. Occasionally, some robots will spawn and try to attack Buzz, but if you're quick on your feet, they're barely an issue. So that's good fun and all, there are definitely a few difficult bits, but nothing that really stands out. But all of this platforming was just the beginning. The most crucial part of the level is still left to be discussed. And it is undoubtedly the most important part of the video. Zerg's Fortress. Zerg's Fortress could easily be its own standalone level. The beginning isn't too difficult, but very linear. Interestingly, the entire level resembles Toy Story 2 more than 3. It's most evident when Buzz finds himself in a hallway rigged with a spiked wall moving gradually toward him. To escape, Buzz must flee through the door at the end of the hallway before the spike wall catches up to him. The falling platforms don't pose too much of a threat as long as the player knows which route to take, especially on the second set of platforms. Buzz must pass through a plethora of vents and destroy more crystals. However, anytime Buzz enters a vent, his laser is deactivated and will only reactivate when he reaches the end of a spiky hallway. At the end of the fortress comes the boss fight against Zerg. The only way to defeat Zerg is to zap him with Buzz's fully charged laser three times. One of the level's biggest time-saving strats found by Capri Dog shows that Buzz can zap Zerg with three full laser shots in just one phase. After Zerg teleports away, the level fades to black. Buzz's video game takes up a good third of the entire Toy Story 3 speedrun. There are other strategies that can save time. Here are a few to display. Oh my god, I actually made it. Oh my god, I, I didn't think this was possible, what? These time saves are nice, but most don't even save 5 seconds, or haven't been pulled off in a full game run yet. Many of these levels have either large skips or big optimizations of their own. The exceptions are Train Rescue, Sunnyside Daycare, and Buzz's Video Game. Since Train is so linear, it doesn't have many opportunities for large skips to take place. Sunnyside consists mainly of minigames, and the only way to clear them is by optimizing the routes as much as possible. But Buzz's video game? This was the only level that took longer than 10 minutes in the speedrun. It had open platforms, non-linear gameplay, and yet, there was no single level-defining trick to be found. See? This version's way faster than the other one. It is, but... I just can't seem to find a skip in this level! Wow, you seem pretty passionate about this. I'm sure you didn't spend countless hours trying to find something that may or may not exist, right? In mid-2021, I was grinding nearly every level in Toy Story 3, trying to improve and prepare for full game runs. In my practice, I got very intrigued by Buzz's video game. I'd typically spend hours trying to practice shorter skips that hadn't been implemented in runs yet. Most only saved 5 seconds tops, and their viability was questionable. But one thought in particular had attained my attention more than the other discoveries. I was traversing through the rubble at the beginning of the platforming part where I thought of something. 
When you land on the ground past the rubble, a giant meteor appears in the sky and destroys the area. But what if you could somehow avoid the meteor from spawning above the planet entirely? When Buzz clears the rubble and gets onto still ground, his health bar disappears and the meteor charges toward the planet. So, what if Buzz never touches the ground? What will happen to the meteor and the fate of the whole planet? That's where this game's defining glitch comes in. Infinite Wall Jumps. At the end of the platform section, you can infinite wall jump off an invisible wall and skip the last crystal area. This is very precise, as you have a chance of falling out of bounds easily. But what knowledge can we take from this trick? Won't the meteor still spawn once you eventually touch the ground in this situation? Yes. Unless you wall jump along the cliff side. If Buzz can wall jump below this line, the meteor will never spawn and destroy the planet. This is quite a challenge. If you wall jump too high, the meteor may still spawn even if you didn't touch the ground. And if you wall jump too low, you may accidentally fall out of bounds. But. Was possible. Now we were past the meteor, we could finally explore the area that was previously inaccessible. It was a nice, wide, open landscape. Quite the change of pace for a level that had so many linear sections to it. But the question still remained. What purpose does this serve? The Zerg entrance was nowhere to be found. Where could it be? I scoured the area looking for it, and got to the mountains. Turns out, the entire mountainside has no collision at all. And the coolest part? There was invisible ground beyond the wall. I ran into the void, hoping to find something instrumental for this speedrun. But... Nothing. The road ended. I fell into the abyss. But I noticed something as I was falling to my imminent doom. It looked like a familiar structure from a latter part of the level. But before I fully processed what I was looking at, I respawned. The structure in the distance seemed somewhat familiar, but I couldn't put my finger on what exactly it was. Regardless, I knew that there was no way that I was going to be able to reach it. I had no choice but to move on. I was slightly disappointed that I didn't find anything in the terrain portion of Buzz's, but I wasn't completely deterred. After all, the real glitch hunting took place in Zerg's fortress. If you exclude the autoscroller at the beginning, Zerg's fortress took up over half of the level. An average Zerg segment would take up close to 5 minutes. With more potential time saves and way more theories brewing, the fortress became heavily explored. We experimented with finding more time saves. One idea took place at the beginning of the fortress. Buzz must infinite wall jump on top of the hallway, land on an invisible strip of ground located out of bounds, and jump into the teleporter below. This would completely skip the obstacles located in the hallway and the need to destroy the crystal. I timed this strat with the regular route and... It was faster! <gasps> by less than a second. At least it was another time save, but not quite what we were hoping for. We kept exploring the other parts of the fortress. After all, there was still so many other areas to explore and exploit. In the same hallway that was just mentioned, we had another idea that included one of the spiky obstacles that was meant to crush a buzz. Could we utilize this somehow? Well, it turns out, if you wall jump on top of the hallway and stand on top of the obstacle, not only do you not take damage, but you can actually get flung if you jump at the right time. This was especially evident on the up and down spike. If you jumped as the wall came up, you'd get flung really high into the air. We tried to use this trick repeatedly, but unfortunately, there was nothing close enough to jump to other than the area right below us. Thus. Nothing ever came of this neat discovery. 
That's cool and all, but haven't all these theories already failed? I mean, where's the good stuff? Now, now, just hold your horses. Things are about to get serious. None of the glitch hunters gave up looking for new discoveries, but it was becoming incredibly tedious to keep exploring the level. Not because the fortress itself was tedious, but because of how long it took to get to the fortress. Every time you had to enter the level, first you had to endure the first two and a half minute auto scroller, then you had to complete the entire platforming section to finally have a shot at Zerg's fortress. Runners were dying of excitement every time they had to go through the same six minute journey to get to the fortress. Who wants to spend hours hunting for glitches when a good chunk of that time is taken up by every reset? Well, soon, somebody would come to the rescue. We wouldn't have to worry about the tediousness of the level any longer. We finally had a savior. This person's name is Mooks. Mooks had been lurking in the Toy Story 3 server on and off for a few years, but became more active in late 2021. Mooks wasn't just any other glitch hunter, however. He was a professional at making programs inside of games like Toy Story 3. Using his incredible hacker skills, in late November he put together a program essentially allowing players to go in creative mode. This program gave us the freedom to move up, down, side to side, and open up so many more possibilities. To top it all off, he created a way to skip the auto-scroller and the terrain. We could finally practice the fortress without being forced to replay the first 6 minutes of the level. Using this program, I also had one of my long-term questions answered. Remember the weird structure I found when I was in the void? Turns out, in that area was Zerg's fortress. If we look at the level from a bird's eye view, we can see it splits into two different areas. The post-desolate planet and the post-post-desolate planet. The post-post-desolate planet was where most of the platforming took place and where Zerg's loading zone was located. And of course, we got a good look at the entire fortress. The beginning of the level is located in the white hexagon. From there, we can see the hallway and the crystal room in front of it. There are two giant structures located on each side, and the vents are located in the middle. We've learned where pretty much every part of the level is. Now, how can this help us? All we wanted to do was to skip some portion of the level, and with so much glitch potential, why were we struggling so hard to find... anything? We tried so many strategies, some which I haven't even brought up. We tried exploiting the level using the invisible ships of ground out of bounds, abusing the hitboxes of teleporters which ended up breaking the level in seemingly unexplainable ways. And every time, we came up empty-handed. It just doesn't make sense! I I've tried absolutely everything and nothing works. Well, did you try the final hallway by chance? Of course I checked there! I checked there- Oh my god, Daniel, you're a genius! What would you do without me? The vents are the most linear part of the level. The only obstacles in these parts are the lasers. At the end of each vent is a grate that Buzz must break open to progress further. However, there is a special secret at the end of each vent. You see, you couldn't actually wall jump off of any of the walls until you got to the very end of each vent. We could wall jump over the end of the vent and land down the hallway with spikes below. You could do this for both of the hallways. The first one didn't seem to garner much usefulness, however. We could look around and see the entire level from a point of view not previously possible, but other than that, there wasn't much we could do. But the last hallway had something very special. A prominent player in the community named Exotic Sponge had theorized a new potential strategy that skipped over a minute in the level. Below the hallway was the Zerg boss platform. What if you could jump from the hallway and land all the way onto the Zerg platform? Exotic presented a video of him jumping from the top of the hallway and coming within striking distance of the platform. Out of everything the community had discovered up to this point, this was by far the most promising potential for a skip we had ever seen. And it seemed so simple. All we needed to do was hover over the platform and trigger the boss fight. 
If this worked, we were looking at an incredible time save. There was just one issue. No matter how far we tried to hover, we always came just short of the platform. Now it may seem as though we would have increasing odds of success if we jumped off closer to the end of the hallway, and we would if it wasn't for one big problem. The Zerg platform wasn't the only thing that was below the hallway. There was also an invisible death plane. By using the lines on the hallway, we can measure roughly how far the death plane stretches. The furthest spot we can jump off of safely is on the second line. Any farther, and Buzz will immediately disintegrate. This was... heartbreaking. We kept jumping over and over, we spent hours going through trial and error. At one point, we became so desperate that we even started using co-op to help increase our chances by the slimmest of margins. But no matter what we did, that death plane was the one obstacle between us and discovering a brand new skip in Buzz's video game. We were so close to breaking yet another level in the game, and yet, it just wasn't meant to be. the solution. As it turns out, we didn't have to hover at all. The key was so simple, and yet it flew over everybody's heads for so long. Quickly, I put in several more attempts with this newfound knowledge that we had acquired. We were so close to achieving our dream. Ever since the beginning of Toy Story 3 speedrunning, the holy grail for years was to find a skip in Zerg's fortress. It was the last level with any possible potential to have a game-breaking skip waiting to be uncovered. This was it. This was quite possibly one of the most important discoveries ever made in this game's history. Actually lose my mind. I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna lose my mind. Yes! We got it! Yes! Oh my god. And you spawn in- wait. Wait. Guys. Anytime Buzz enters a vent, his laser is deactivated, and will only reactivate when he reaches the end of a spiky hallway. The laser was deactivated. The one way to defeat Zerg, the only weapon we could use against him, was lost. Everything had fallen into place, except for the very last thing that could have gone wrong.
to this day, we have been unable to find a major time save inside of the fortress. But our quest is far from over, and the hunt has only just begun. The only thing that we can do now is hope that we can find something, hopefully a potential skip as big and as promising as what we had almost found. When that will happen is uncertain. But if there is one thing I know, the community will never give up on their search. Together, we will find the holy grail that this game has been hiding from us for so long. Together, we will break this level and expose what is truly possible. And we won't stop until we go to infinity and beyond.